In this video, we're going to review the parts and functions of both the female and male reproductive system. I'm going to go through the functions which you are responsible for on the test, so you want to make sure you pay attention to that. It will be in multiple choice format in the sense that you will have several choices, but it will be several choices, so you still need to know what's going on. You can't make a good guess when there's like 10 possible um, options or 10 possible answers. Okay, so number one is the ovary, and this is where the female eggs will develop. Uh, once a month, one will be ovulated into the oviducts, number two. Number three is the fimbriae, and what those do is, remember, there's a gap between the ovary and the fimbriae, and they, fimbriae little hairs, they kind of pull the egg, they pull the egg towards the oviduct. And then we have the uterus, which its general function is for implantation of the developing embryo if the egg is fertilized by a sperm. Specific parts you need to know is five is the endometrium. This is the layer that grows and sloughs off during a woman's menstrual cycle. Seven is the myometrium. That is the muscular layer. That is the muscular layer um, that expels the endometrium in a, in a normal menstrual cycle and ex or expels the fetus during a pregnancy. And number six is the cervix, which is the bottom of the uterus. Number nine is the vagina, and that's where uh, the endometrium will slough off on a monthly basis or the fetus will travel through that as it's born. And at the bottom of the vagina is number 10 and that is the hymen. The external genitalia is called the vulva. The vulva. The structures within the vulva are the clitoris which is, gives the female pleasure. The pleasurable feeling comes from the clitoris. The labia minora and the labia majora are all the external genitalia. And again, together, this is called the vulva. One more time through the parts, we have the ovary, the fimbriae, the oviducts, the uterus. Within the uterus, we have the endometrium, we have the myometrium, and we have the cervix, the vagina, the hymen, vulva. Within the vulva, we have the clitoris, the labia minora, in the labia majora. So those are the parts that you're going to need for the female. Now as we get into the male anatomy, we're going to start first with the sperm. This whole area here marked by the B is the head of the sperm and it contains the 23 chromosomes that the sperm is going to contribute. A surrounding part of the head of the sperm is the acrosome. This contains enzymes that if that sperm gets to the the ovum, it will help break down the outer portion to allow one sperm to fertilize the egg. Behind the head, we have the midpiece, which contains ATP. That ATP is used to give the flagella the power it needs in order to move the sperm through the female reproductive organs to get to the egg. So again, you have the head covered by the acrosome. Behind the head, we have the midpiece, and then we have the flagella. Now, again, looking at the male anatomy, both for structure and function, we're going to start in the testes. And the testes is where the sperm mature or develop, I should say. It's where the sperm develop, specifically within what are called the seminiferous tubules. The seminiferous tubules are located within the testes and, again, are where sperm will develop. You have the epididymis, number two, which is where the sperm will mature. These are located in the sac called the scrotum that exists because sperm will not develop at body temperature. They need to be cooler. And so this allows for the sperm to develop in a cooler environment. So we take the vas deferens up, and then you're going to see the accessory glands, which will secrete fluids which will increase the chances of sperm surviving. We have the seminiferous gland or the seminal, sorry I apologize, that's the seminal vesicles. Number five is the seminal vesicles and it contributes nutrients um, that will allow the sperm to produce the energy. So again that's the seminal vesicle. You have the ejaculatory duct which takes the sperm and the fluid from the seminal vesicles into the urethra which will leave the body. So ejaculatory duct is right here. Number seven, which this surrounds the urethra, 
is the prostate gland and it's going to contribute fluids that are going to again allow for the success or maturation of the sperm to allow them to keep surviving. The last gland, accessory gland, is the bulbourethral gland number eight and that is going to contribute fluid that's going to neutralize the urethra because if urine's coming out that urethra there's going to be it's going to be slightly acidic without the bulbourethra gland many sperm would not survive the trip out the urethra because of the acidity so it helps neutralize the urethra again to increase the number of sperm that are going to survive the trip within the penis we have the spongy tissue okay this blue stuff is spongy tissue which will fill with blood during an erection. We have the end of the penis, which is the most sensitive area, which is the glans penis. And then covering that glans penis is the prepus, or you may know it as foreskin, but I want you to know as prepus, that exists over the glans penis when a uh, child is born male, they have that. That also is what can be removed, okay, be removed during a circumcision from a male child. So again, let me go through the parts again. The testes, within the testes are the seminiferous tubules, the epididymis. The epididymis and the testes are located in the scrotum. Sperm during ejaculation travels out the vas deferens. The three glands that are going to contribute to the semen, semen being the sperm plus the other fluid, is going to be the seminal vesicles. You have the ejaculatory duct right around the prostate gland and then you have the bulbourethra gland. You then have the urethra going out the penis. You have the spongy tissue within the penis, the glans penis which is the end, and then you have the prepus or the foreskin that covers that glans penis. So again we've gone through the male and female parts. Make sure you're also make sure you remember you're also responsible for functions as well as locations.